Hey guys, it's Keon, and today I'm going to talk about Jose Aldo, who retired from the sport of MMA after his last fight at UFC 278. And although that fight was a defeat, Jose's legacy still stands strong as most people consider him as the greatest featherweight of all time. And in the second half of his career, he found more success down at bantamweight. So in this video, we're going to take a look at his MMA career to answer the question, how good was Jose Aldo actually? Jose began his MMA career on August the 10th, 2004 at the age of 17. His first opponent was Mario Bigola. It took Jose 18 seconds to connect with a head kick that knocked Mario out cold. Two months later, he fought Hudson Rocha. Hudson got brutalized on the feet in round one, and with the cut opened on his eyebrow, the doctor stopped the fight. Five months later, Jose fought Luis de Paula. Jose brought the fight down and threw ground and pound before locking up an arm triangle choke that forced a tap. After this win, he fought Eritano Silva Barbosa. It took Jose 20 seconds to drop Eritano with a knee, which led to punches and soccer kicks that finished the fight. Two months later, Jose fought Anderson Silverio. Anderson tried to fight in the clinch or off his back for most of this fight, but Jose's strike was too much for him. This led to brutal soccer kicks from Jose, which ended the fight. After picking up a win against Phil Harris, Jose fought Mickey Young. Jose connected with a bunch of kicks early on, and when Mickey went to throw one of his, he slipped, and this led to ground and pound that forced the ref to step in. A month later, Jose fought Luciano Azevedo. Jose moved up to lightweight for this bout, and he was looking good early on as he was landing some nice shots and defending most of the takedowns. Luciano's game plan was to bring the action down, but he was unable to until the second round where he secured a takedown and got a hold of Jose's back. This led to a rear naked choke that forced Jose to tap, handing him his first defeat. Despite this defeat, Jose bounced back with three decision wins against Thiago Meller, Fabio Melo, and Shoji Maruyama. Then afterwards, he signed with the WEC and made his debut with the promotion on June the 1st, 2008. His opponent was Alexander Franca Nogueira. Jose pressed forward, connected with some nice shots, and also defended Alexander's takedown attempts. And after after defending another takedown in round 2, Jose got on top and began throwing ground and pound which led to the finish. At WEC 36, Jose fought Jonathan Brookins. Although Jonathan had his moments in this fight, overall Jose was doing more with his counters and light kicks. This led to a big right hand in round 3 that dropped Jonathan and after some more ground and pound, the ref stepped in. Following this win, Jose fought Rolando Perez. Rolando was getting lit up on the feet before eating a knee that dropped him. This led to ground and pound that forced the ref to step Step in. At WEC 39, Jose fought Chris Mickle. Jose connected with a bunch of shots which led to a knee to the body that hurt Chris. After some more shots on the feet, the ref stepped in. Three months later, Jose fought Cub Swanson. It took Jose 8 seconds to finish the fight with a flying knee and punches. At WEC 44, Jose fought for the WEC Featherweight Championship. His opponent was champion Mike Brown. Jose was doing a good job at avoiding Mike's shots and takedown attempts. This led to some nice shots of his own and after Jose brought the fight down in round 2, Mike went down and ate ground and pound that forced the ref to step in, making Jose the new WEC featherweight champion. His first title defense was at WEC 48 against Uriah Faber. This was Jose's first fight to go 5 rounds, but for the entire time, he dominated by denying Uriah's takedown attempts and connecting with brutal leg kicks. By the end, Jose won by unanimous decision. Following this victory, Jose defeated Manny Gamburian in the second round by dropping him with an uppercut and following up with ground and pound. And with the WEC being bought out by the UFC, Jose was promoted to UFC featherweight champion. He made his debut with the promotion at UFC 129 where he fought Mark Hominick. Jose controlled most of the action in this fight both on the feet and on the ground. But Mark showed a ton of heart and in the final round, he brought Jose down and connected with some nice shots from above. But it wasn't enough and by the end, Jose won by unanimous decision. At UFC 136, he fought Kenny Florian. Although Kenny had his moments and was making it a fight, Overall, Jose was defending most of his offense and was also doing more damage. After 5 rounds, he won by unanimous decision. 3 months later, Jose fought Chad Mendez. The action was back and forth early on as both men connected with leg kicks and Chad attempted takedowns with all of them being denied. And yes, one of them was defended due to a cage grab. Regardless, Jose was able to separate and connect with the knee and punches that finished the fight. At UFC 156, Jose fought Frankie Edgar. It was a competitive fight that saw Jose find success early by connecting with nice shots and denying the takedowns. But as the fight went on, Jose began to slow down and Frankie began to find success both on the feet and on the ground. 
Regardless, it wasn't enough, and by the end, Jose won by unanimous decision. Six months later, Jose fought Chan Sung Jung. Jose avoided most of the Korean zombies' attacks while finding success of his own both on the feet and on the ground. After Chan Sung Jung dislocated his shoulder with an overhand right in round four, Jose put on the pressure and eventually he got the finish via ground and pound. At UFC 169, Jose fought Ricardo Lamas. Jose controlled the action on the feet and on the ground for most of the fight. The most success Ricardo had was in the final round where he was on top. But that wasn't enough and by the end, Jose won by unanimous decision. Eight months later, Jose fought Chad Mendes for a second time. In contrast to their first fight, this one went all five rounds and was a back and forth war both on the feet and on the ground. It was a very close fight but by the end, Jose won by unanimous decision. After this, Jose was set to fight Conor McGregor at UFC 189. But after Jose pulled out due to injury, the highly anticipated bout was rescheduled for UFC 194 where Conor was now the interim champion. And sadly for Jose, it took Connor 13 seconds to knock him out and become the new UFC featherweight champion, making it Jose's first defeat in over 10 years, which ended his 18 fight win streak. It was also the first time he had ever lost at 145. Seven months later, Jose fought for the interim UFC featherweight championship. His opponent was Frankie Edgar, making it their second meeting. And Jose bounced back with an impressive performance that saw him connect with the better shots and denying Frankie's takedowns. By the end, he won by unanimous decision to become the interim featherweight champion. But with champion Conor McGregor being stripped of his featherweight championship after winning the lightweight championship, Jose was promoted to undisputed featherweight champion. At UFC 212, he fought interim champion Max Holloway. Jose looked good early on as he was aggressive and connected with shots that did a lot of damage. But Max was able to eat these and as the fight went on, he began to press forward and connect with shots of his own. Jose began to slow down and after getting dropped by a 1-2 combo, he ate ground and pound which eventually forced the ref to step in. The two fought in an immediate rematch 6 months later. And once again, Jose started off strong on the feet. But as the fight went on, he slowed down and Max began to take over and after a desperation takedown in round 3, Max threw ground and pound that forced the ref to step in. Following this Feet, Jose fought Jeremy Stevens. The two went back and forth on the feet early on, but near the end of the first, Jose connected with a body shot that dropped Jeremy. This led to ground and pound that forced the ref to step in. After this win, Jose fought Hinato Moicano. After going back and forth in the first, Jose began to put a lot of pressure in the second, which led to a barrage of punches that hurt Hinato. This eventually forced the ref to step in. At UFC 237, Jose fought Alexander Volkanovsky. Jose was unable to get much going in this fight while Alexander Alexander did well in controlling the action on the feet and in the clinch. By the end, Alexander won by unanimous decision. Following this defeat, Jose decided to move down to bantamweight. He made his debut at 135 at UFC 245. His opponent was Marlon Moraes. Although Marlon started off strong, Jose began to take over near rounds 2 and 3 by pressing forward and connecting with some nice shots. Although many believed Jose won by the end, it was Marlon who was awarded with the split decision. Despite this loss, Jose's next fight was for the the vacant UFC Bantamweight Championship. His opponent was Piotr Jan. Although Jose had his moments in this fight, Piotr was controlling most of the action, especially as the fight went on. By round 5, Jose slowed down and this led to him being dropped by punches. After some ground and pound from Piotr, the ref stepped in. Jose came back 5 months later and fought Marlon Vera. And Jose did well in this fight as he avoided most of Marlon's offense and overall was the busier fighter both on the feet and on the ground. By the end, Jose won by unanimous decision. At UFC 265, Jose fought Pedro Munoz, and this was a beautiful performance from Jose who outstruck Pedro for all three rounds. By the end, Jose won by unanimous decision. Four months later, Jose fought Rob Font, and for five rounds, he dominated Rob on the feet to win by unanimous decision. After this, Jose fought Marab Devalishvili at UFC 278. For most of this fight, Marab pressed forward with shots and also attempted takedowns, which all got denied. It wasn't much action from him, but it was more than what Jose did throughout the three rounds. By the end, Marab won by unanimous decision. This turned out to be Jose's last fight as he announced his retirement a month later. And although it was sad to see him come off of a defeat, he called it a career much earlier than most. Because in my opinion, he still had fight left in him. But maybe he knew what was best for himself, and I respect him for sticking with that decision. 
So after going 31 and 8, how good was Jose Aldo actually? At the time of making this video, I considered Jose Aldo as the greatest featherweight of all time. Yes, we have Alexander Volkanovsky, who seems close to be taking that title, but I still put Jose above him because of his longevity. He defended the 145 pound belt nine times between the WEC and the UFC. And then after losing the belt, he won it back right away to become a two time UFC featherweight champion. Those are numbers you rarely see from today's champions, as most of them are either short time champions or they decide to chase belts in other divisions. Jose was the featherweight king for so long and unless Volkanovski can remain at the top for as long as him, I can't consider him as the 145 pound goat. But aside from longevity, Jose was also an amazing fighter. In his prime, he was extremely athletic. He was very fast which led to good movement on the feet. He also carried a lot of power which gave him an explosiveness unlike most fighters. And with all this combined, he was amazing on the feet. His leg kick are probably the best that we've ever seen in MMA. His kicks in general were just brutal, and the same could be said about his punches and knees. His counter striking was phenomenal, but so was his striking when he pressed forward and drowned his opponents. And then when you add in his takedown defense, which was superb, his opponents basically had no other option than to just fight on the feet with him. Even if he stuffed the takedown and got on top, he would do a ton of damage with his ground and pound. Even though he wasn't the best on the ground, his other weapons made up for it. But when he did face strong wrestlers and grapplers, he did face troubles at times. Because even if his opponent wasn't able to take him down, the pressure would become too much for Jose which tired him out. And him tiring out was a big issue in his career. He was known as the king of three rounders for a reason. But when he entered the championship rounds, he began to face troubles as his energy depleted. And he was able to get away with that during the prime of his career, but as he got older and began to face young and hungry fighters, Jose was unable to keep up. He wouldn't be as fast or strong at these points, and it was also easier for his opponents to take him down. But once again, this was also the case because he was getting older. His athleticism was no longer the same as before, and this was a huge thing that made Jose good. Another thing that began to decrease were his leg kicks. In the latter half of his career, he began throwing them less. And this was a huge tool in his arsenal that brutalized his opponents early on. So with all these things gone, it's easy to see why Jose couldn't stay at the top forever. Which is why I'm so impressed with the way he ended his career. He went down to 135, and in his last four fights, he went 3-1. Won. Had he won his last fight against Marab, he would have fought for the Bantamweight Championship again, which would have been very impressive at the age of 36. At a time when his career was written off, he proved that he was still able to hang with the best in the world. So even though a lot of his legacy was built at featherweight, we also have to recognize how well he did at Bantamweight as an aging legend. And this is another thing about Jose's career that was so impressive. Whenever it seemed like it was over for him as an MMA fighter, he bounced back big. When he lost to Connor, it seemed like that was going to be the lasting memory of his career. But then he came back and became the featherweight champion again. When he lost his belt again and left for 135 only to extend his losing streak to 3, he stayed in it and became a top contender at bantamweight, which at that point was arguably the best division in the UFC. Whenever it seemed like it was over for Jose, he proved the doubters wrong. Even though his last fight was a loss, he left on his own terms because I still think he could have competed with the best. He is a certified legend not only because he is the GOAT at featherweight, but also because he is one of the greatest fighters of all time. That's why I would give his MMA career a 9.5 out of 10. But what do you think? How good was Jose Aldo actually? And what was your favorite moment from his career? But that's a lot for now, so I'll see you in my next one.